Okay guys, we are going to do a meme today. A Josh Leo styled meme. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like. You know how you can support the channel in various other ways. And up until the next video, have flamble day. Ciao. We are obviously not going to stop at this point. We are going to go further. Why not compute it a little bit and talk about a few cases? When, when does it work in the regular fields that we know or the regular um, groups and, and whatnot that we know about natural numbers, integers, etc. Let us dive right in and let's see. Okay, at first it would make sense to actually compute this left hand side. Okay, so just finding the common denominator. We are going to have AD plus BC over b times d. One restriction we already need to have is that b and d or either of those can be equal to zero. Otherwise, um, yeah, we would run into some few very tiny problems, okay? If you find something like this in group theory, maybe sometimes you are going to see this like this addition, some, some weird direct sum or so. Yeah, um, it's just some operation that we can actually compute using our regular addition, multiplication, etc. Now we're going to take those sides and why not solve for a B, C or D? I really don't care. Let's multiply by B, D and by B plus D. We have put the restrictions on them that they can be equal to zero both or either of them at the same time. So now, if we do this, we're going to end up with ABD plus CBD, CBD being equal to, okay, now we have ADB and you can already see that a lot of stuff is going to cancel out. This is really nice actually. Plus AD squared, okay, this and that, and now we're going to have BC squared. Um, B squared C, I'm terribly sorry, B squared C and then CBD. Now we can subtract on both sides this, this, this and that and we are going to end up with the simple relationship that zero is just equal to AD squared plus B squared C or CB squared. Now let us talk about the natural numbers, <coughs> positive integers without zero. Obviously, there's not going to be any solution to this because we would need for this to be equal to zero. B squared C, for example, to be the additive inverse of this thing. Doesn't work in the positive integers without zero. Now, what about the positive integers with zero? Well, then we could say that A and C must both trivially be equal to zero. And then it would work out. But this is the only solution that does work out in the positive integers with zero. What about positive and negative integers? This is good, negative integers. We can actually subtract stuff now. Woo, this is pretty exciting. Why not subtract um, b, c, uh, b squared c on both sides? So we are going to have a d squared being equal to negative b squared c and now we can divide both sides by d squared. It's not equal to zero. This is something we didn't want. And then we have a being equal to negative b squared over d squared is nothing other than b over d squared. I'm going to put it like this, times c. Now, the positive and negative integers. Hmm. Does it work out? Does something like this work out? Yes, it does. There are infinitely many solutions. The only thing we really need is that if we only act in the positive and negative integers, we need um, b squared times c over d to be once again an integer. So if b squared times c ends up being, I don't know, a composite number like um, 27 over, for example, 4, we would end up with a fraction. Doesn't work out. This is something that doesn't work. But if we were, for example, to say b and d would both be 1, and then we would have c being equal to 2. We would end up with a being equal to negative 2. And then we would have valid solutions that we could plug into here and then we are good to go. That's with all the positive and negative integers. Now we are going to go into a quotient field. For example, 
the rational numbers. Well, then we have infinitely many solutions and it really doesn't quite matter what you choose for B, D and C. Doesn't quite matter. We are good to go. Okay, this is something that does work out nicely, except for some shit like pi. Okay, if you were to say um, b is equal to pi, then yeah, well, that wouldn't be too nice. Okay, but other than that, we can choose any regular old positive or negative integer and would actually get a nice solution right here. For example, b being equal to one half, d being equal to one third, and then c something, and then we would get a nice expression for our a being something negative. Same spiel in the real numbers, okay? Once we got into fields, Everything was nice, so we had a multiplicative inverse for everything, except when d is equal to zero, we didn't want that. In the real numbers, same spiel, you can also choose something like pi or whatnot as the value, it would work out. We would have nice and valid solutions for this problem up here. But there's more to that, okay? So we can take a look at last field that you use on a daily basis, the complex numbers, and, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. Why not solve for b, for example, okay? Let us subtract, um, or we are going to start at this position, let us solve for d, meaning we would need to divide both sides by a and then take the square root. That means d is nothing other than positive or negative square root of negative. Okay, we are going to get b squared c over a. Now we are going to take the square root of negative one. One of those parts is positive, maybe, so we can break up the third, meaning it's positive or negative i, times the square root of b squared is the absolute value of b, but we are, on, uh, we are already taking the positive or negative branch right here into account, meaning this is just going to be b times the square root of c over a. Yeah, and this case is a bit more interesting because it allows for many nice solutions and we actually have two branches each and every time. So let us go for an example and let's see if this actually works out. So let us choose something for B, C and A. Let's, let's make this nice and easy on us. Let's say trivially um, C is the same as A. Okay, let, let's just say they are one. Okay, it's just easy, nice. Um, free time math that we do right here, and we want b to be equal to, I don't care, two. Meaning we are going to end up with d being equal to positive or negative two times i. Exactly. And let's say we are just going to take the positive branch, okay? This holds for each and every real number that we plug into here, c, a, and b, also for complex numbers that you put in here. We don't want a to be equal to zero. I think that comes in quite naturally. And yeah, so this is just one of many, many, infinitely many, uncountably many examples. Now let's plug it into here. At first, let us plug the information into here. a plus c is going to result in two over b plus d is two plus two i. And let's hope that I actually get the arithmetic done nicely. Okay. <laughs> now, we also have this. A times D is nothing other than 2i. And then we are going to have B times C is nothing other than 2 plus 2. Over B times D is going to result in 4i. Okay. Let us find the regular complex numbers expressions for both sides because two expressions, two complex numbers are equal if and only if real and imaginary part are actually equal. So let us compute a bit of stuff. For this part, you can see that two is a common factor. So we can actually cancel out a bit of stuff. This is going to result in i plus one over um, two i. Okay, exactly. And also on this side, let us multiply the left-hand side by the complex conjugate of two plus two i, okay? In both numerator and denominator, let's expand this fraction with two minus two i over two minus two i. Down here, we only have the modulus squared, or it's just the modulus. No, it's the modulus squared. Never mind. and up here, we just have some simple multiplication. Meaning overall, i plus one, over two times i is thus the same as four minus four i over, okay, and this is going to give us four plus four is going to be eight. Eight is two times four, so we have four as a common factor. We're going to get one minus i over two. Okay, 
they do not look the same, but simply because, okay, now I see I was already wondering, I was a bit of, uh, I was a tiny bit scared that I did something wrong. We still have a complex number right here, okay, with, with some um, i in the denominator. Let us expand this. So we are going to get i times i is negative one. Then we are going to get on this part negative something over two. And also we have i times i is negative one plus i. If we distribute negative one into here, we are actually going to get um, one minus i over two. Ah, oh, it, it did work out. And you see, it does work out. There are infinitely many solutions. And this is if we just take a look at our regular old fields, groups, monoids, etc., that we know and love, natural numbers, integers, and all the rational boys, complex numbers, real numbers, etc. It's nice and fun playing around with stuff like this. And I hope you did enjoy this video. But before we end the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Brain.org for sponsoring this episode of um, Doing Weird Edition on Rational Numbers. Today's video was a bit different since we've tackled some random math meme and just started working through it step by step. Working on fun and thought-provoking problems like this one is one of the ways to take a step up from everyday mathematics to higher maths. Mathematics overall is all about formalizing relationships, so trying to define a new operation on certain sets and actually going through all the casework is a great and accessible introduction to higher mathematics. For example, group theory. It's a fantastic branch of mathematics. If you find joy in solving problems and want to use this kind of mathematical framework to understand the world, then Brilliant could be the perfect fit for you. Brilliant is an online learning platform and also an app which focuses on active learning and problem solving. By working through their over 60 interactive courses in maths, computer sciences and all sorts of scientific disciplines, Brilliant helps you achieve your STEM goals in no time at all. I for myself really enjoyed their newly added algorithm fundamentals course which covers a bunch of basic ideas ranging from big O's over to conditionals and loops. First of all, you start off with all the simple operations used in computer programming and then you build them up to solving problems efficiently with useful algorithms. If you want to get a first glance of their <laughs> brilliant website, no pun intended, make sure to check out my latest live stream where I was working through set course and also did a lot of competitive mathematics and algebra together with you guys, my subscribers. It was a ton of fun interacting with you for one and a half hours straight and that's the reason why I decided to start doing streams bi-weekly, starting soon. If this feels like it's something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can try out Brilliant for completely free and the first 200 people to use the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription. So if you would like to support the channel, then make sure to check out Brilliant. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, you know how you can do so in various ways. And up until the next video, have flamble day, I suppose. Ciao. Colombia.